Sorry, were you waiting on me to do something there? Is I was that... waiting to see if you were going to do something. I, you said, let's do it. And I said, okay. I did. And yeah. Uh-huh. Here I, we are. That, that is how it Binary works. Chance, a podcast. <laughs> With, uh, as always, our consistent intros. Uh, <laughs> always thought, know where you are thought, based on this get intro. better and better at the intros. Like every single episode, <laughs> it's just we nail it even harder. It's like the it's, internet. Uh, it feels... <laughs> It feels like the one thing where practice is not helping out at all. <laughs> Iterative improvement. No, I, I, I do believe I've gotten quite a bit worse at it. I, there, <laughs> there was a time where I would like jot down things that I needed to say. Uh, and now when it's my turn, number one, I'm shocked and surprised by it. And number two, I can't remember where to even find us. If you Google binary jazz, binary jazz dot us. Is the There's website. probably places on the internet that'll show up. At least and, Twitter and, and a website. Uh, at least, in theory, we are on iHeartRadio now. Maybe. I don't know. I We have a page, but it doesn't have anything on it yet. And um, something else was coming that I submitted it to. What was it? Uh, oh, Audible. It might be on Audible. But that hasn't been... Is that... Audible or Audible? O-D-D-A-B-L-E? Not Audible. I don't know if it's a thing. I just want clarification in case it is a thing. Um, That's seemingly very official. It does seem official, yeah. The good news is... It's almost like we're doing an actual podcast. I mean, we're on all the podcast networks. We're everywhere (laughs) now. It's just, we've got market penetration. It's just that nobody cares. We still have only five listeners. Hi, five listeners. Um, How you doing? Thanks for joining our pod show. Thank you for do- joining our pod show. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to disappoint. Oh. Um, do you remember in the early days of podcasting when Apple made a stink about the word pod as the prefix? <laughs> Not specifically, but it's it's hilarious. Um, it seems appropriate somehow yeah and then in the early days of podcasting like it was i mean conceptually it was like oh here's an rss feed with like a media attachment and that was the, the kicker right and like you made you know a read what? it ingested it what's that technology's not that much different it's still in rss oh no it's feed totally the same. attachment yeah yeah it's totally the same uh there's been a there's been a few meta things added to it and a lot better uh categorization on the ingest side but in the early days were just kind of like the wild wild west i had a uh a Windows NT server under my desk with like eight hard drives in it, hosting archived content for some some of the early podcasters. And uh, to boot the machine up, it's a server, so of course we booted off and so the Windows had crashed back in those days. It was it was a wonderful time for the internet. What is archived content? Who cares? Um, to uh, to boot up the machine. Um, you first had to there were two power supplies. Like I so you had to and machine. so the one had a crank. You had to crank it up first. <laughs> so the one was one of the old style power supplies where it was actually still a switch. So I had to flip that one on and get these first like four drives spinning. And then I flip on the second one that had the boot drive. And then uh, and then you could boot and have access to all the content. And uh, I mean, I, I want to say it was something massive, like eight gigabytes of hard drive space or something. It's... Yeah, massive. <sighs> I mean, that was massive for I mean, what is this? If we're doing NT, is that like 1998? Uh, no, I think the machine probably was from 98. I think that this was later. I think this was like the early 2000s. I th- it was old hardware when I got my hands on it. Yeah. Uh, dual processor, back in the days when you had a, a two physical CPUs. They were not dual core. They were just two physical CPUs. It was wild. Back in the olden times. Yeah. Yeah, when we uh, we actually hand delivered uh, packets. <laughs> so I, I don't know, man. This is why I can't do intros. <laughs> Dumb intro. Are we still on an intro? <laughs> I 
I was trying to explain why I was bad at intros and somehow got sidetracked by my old Tower of Terror server. It had feet that like folded out because it was so tall. Oh, yeah. Whoa. Because like, really? like, I guess if you like got it a little, like because the center of gravity was so high that if you knocked it, I mean, you can imagine the destruction of that thing falling. I, it, I, no why, exaggeration, probably weighed 40 why pounds. Was it, why was it not like just a flat thing? Because they have they have servers that are flat. If it's that yeah, I mean, tall, this was not, this if, was, if it's that tall and skinny and, and has a it has a tendency. Well, it wasn't to fall, skinny. Okay, it well, wasn't if, like if it had a tendency to fall over. I mean, it was it was as wide. It was wide. It was just I guess the idea was that because you presumably had very expensive things in there that if you got it off the center of gravity, knocked it over, be pretty pissed. So the feet kept that from happening. It was as tall as a rack mount is wide, because they made a rack mount. Yeah, so it should so it should just be sideways. Well, under my desk it wasn't because it I had feet there. I left them there. And um but it also had feet there. I don't, Chris, I don't know. I got it second hand. It was cheap. I had two CPUs. I fell in love. <laughs> two CPUs. <laughs> wow. And I wanna say those had to be early well, I don't know if they were Xeon or if they maybe they were still Pentium Pro. <laughs> Who knows? Threw it in the back of my Conestoga wagon and brought it home. <laughs> well, our uh, over the weekend. Um, I'm just going to veer. <laughs> no, I'm not veering Please that do. far, though. Yeah, no, no, go. Um, go. Uh, Bail out. Bail over, out. <laughs> over the weekend, uh, my son um, attempted to build his uh, first computer. And, uh, and he's gotten all the parts, he's done all the research and whatever. Um, and we put it all together. Uh, it won't post. It won't post. <laughs> that is how you. You saw that coming computers. too. You're like, you like the long as soon lead as you up said his first thing computer, isn't gonna boot. Like, nope. I don't know where this is going. That sucks, man. Yep. 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 Uh, so we uh, and we got all the parts. Was on he Amazon. pretty upset about that, or he was pretty disappointed? Yeah. And I'm like, yep, that's the thing that happens. Welcome to building your own computer. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't ever remember like if there was. Having had that happen several times, I never remember if there was like a good reason why. Oh, know? there's never a good reason. I mean, and you'd, you wouldn't be able to figure out what the good reason is, even if there was a good reason. I always feel like I replaced like one component and it started booting, and then maybe I went back to the other component and it was fine, or maybe not. Who knows? It yeah, I thought, I thought. I thought. I thought. Totally. I thought there was a chance that it could have been like ram or something so i tried you know all the different combinations but like it wasn't doing anything it was just not it was just not and i was like yeah that that looks an awful lot like when i fried my motherboard and it didn't do anything so because like the you know the cpu fan is spinning there's power going to it you can see oh. that it's doing things but it's just not I'm like yeah yeah no this this is and like and the motherboard is the worst thing for that to happen on right like yeah build course. everything into the motherboard so you've like done you spent like an hour or two like putting the thing together and then you turn it on and then nothing happens and you're like your what? fingers are blistered and have 17 bandages on them from the little nicks and cuts you got fiddling around with the sharp metal and yeah. yeah 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 so then you have to take everything apart and yeah what a dumb hobby <laughs> yeah, I, I was literally like, "That's that right there is why I don't build computers anymore." For a minute, I was like, "We were doing it," and I was like, "Wow, like I could build my own. I could build a Hackintosh." And like, and then like, and then like, no, that happened. I'm like, "Nope, nope, not gonna do it." I'm gonna oh. give Apple all my money. Yeah, I'm I'm on a Linux laptop right now, and a ladybug has joined our call. Can you see that? Ooh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ladybug has entered the chat. <laughs> Your co host. Oh, oh she goes. I just have my sweater. You know, there are um, male ladybugs. They're not all female. <laughs> yeah, it would be a very short lifespan for the species. If that were the case, I <laughs> suspect. Life uh, finds a way. Um, the way this works is Allison brings a topic. <laughs> Sometimes I just like it. to see where it goes without the topic, though. <laughs> oh, Chris, you've got a ladybug on your cheek. Do I? <laughs> nope. Not any longer. Uh, you can also find us on the internet. Uh, we we are on the internet. 
I am Jazz Secrets on the internet. That's Binary Gary on the internet, and also Allison Plus on the internet. We are Binary Jazz on the internet. Um, the internet is full of bad things, including us. Uh, possibly, possibly including us. Yeah. Or maybe we're like the little beam of sunlight. I will say that if we are uh, uh, in, uh, if we are bad on the internet, it is unintentional, and we would like you to tell us why yeah, we're bad. We're intentionally, we're not intentionally bad on the internet. And well, if possible, we'll rectify it. There there's are some a, things we know uh, we're bad in. There's a. I guess there a radio show or maybe a podcast um but there's this there are these two guys that have the show that aaron found a while ago on facebook because they make these ridiculous like videos that get posted to youtube like i think it's like they have like they have like an after show so the show i believe is good mythical morning which maybe oh <laughs> yeah so that then they have these after things called Good Mythical More, which is generally where they do really stupid shit. And they're both idiots. Like, I'll, I'll come out and say it. They're both idiots, uh, which is part of the fun of watching them because they're just both ridiculous. I don't – yeah, no, I'm not even going to bother about apologizing. They're, they're idiots. <laughs> um, and I would hope that they would accept that uh, judgment uh, with grace and, and wisdom – and and be like yeah I'm, I'm an idiot um so so like they do uh they'll like there there is a there's a thing that they were doing uh a while ago where they were like eating ice cream and they were trying to tell like the ice cream that was like had the artificial <laughs> flavor and the ice cream that had the natural flavor or like they do like and then they're, like they're like blind taste tests right like and or they'll like do um like can you to tell the difference between the the organic like whole food jelly bean versus the like the the fake jelly beans or like I think no that, that might have been the same one like can you taste the artificial flavoring was was the, was the thing um, so they had a whole bunch of different things that like were in organic natural like food version and then like the normal version you get at the store. Um, uh, uh, there's no point to the story. It was like I, th there's a very small handful of things that I watch or listen to that would be considered podcasty, uh, and that's one of the things. And I think that you know, as a podcast, I think we're not a very good podcast. <laughs> I well, no, actually, I'll, I'll take that back. We're not any worse than anyone else. <laughs> <laughs> I think all um, podcasts suck. Is what I'm the saying. The thing I like about Good Mythical Morn or their whole thing is that since they've been friends, since they were like. 12 or something they have this rapport that's like it's just hilarious because they have so much background on the other person that they can really like push the others they just know everything about they're just like mm. getting in there which is there funny. was um at some point i think they called someone who both of them dated at different times like somebody from their past <laughs> yeah which is just really weird. And it was like, hi. Was like, hi. <laughs> just hi. <laughs> so when you were dating me, when you were dating him, what did you yeah. like? What did you think of me? And like, <laughs> so the theme today, or the, the theme, word of the theme, I like thinking of it as a theme better actually theme than a topic. Better. Theme is definitely better. Yeah. The theme today is like sesame street where it's like the letter of the day yes is. yes we should also have a letter of the day <laughs> although we just be rotating through 26 letters unless we started doing letters in other languages that would be pretty interesting the letter or, or we can like do act actual letters like this is from oh yeah well we would need abigail to have adams to her husband john adams <laughs> oh good yeah yeah i was i was thinking letters to us but letters to other people would be great <laughs> i was going to that'd be even better be f Famous letters. Um, I have now forgotten how to pronounce said word because I've only read it. I've never yes. heard it. So it's another one of those classics. Okay, it was I, an instant classic. Because I don't leave my house. <laughs> <laughs> no, 
or talk to other people. Um, Seems prudent. I mean, it's a life. <laughs> it's yeah, a choice. It's on brand. <laughs> yeah, I'm very on brand. Um, so the word is anathema. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, Anna, A-N-A, T-H-E-M-A. Yes. Correct, yeah, okay. Boy, uh, this feels like last week all over again. We yeah. didn't do this word last week, did we? No, no, we didn't do anathema What was, what, last, what was week. last week's? Uh, I was just looking at it. Um, last week's was miasma. Yeah. So anathema is like the ideological opposite to a thing. Like, like, uh, um, voting in, I'll use it in a sentence, voting in a Supreme Court justice before the election is an anathema to Ruth Bader Ginsburg's memory. Did I do it right? <laughs> so I win? You're, you're really close. Yeah, you're, you're right on it. I feel like we should just re- do the reveal because... Because it would be I- an anathema to not. Yeah, because it would be, yeah, it would be an anathema to, to the podcast, too. <laughs> no, it's, you're close. You're just like, you're like, like your example is right, but not for the reasons you not said. Not for the right reason. That, that's very fair. That's very fair, because I, I, there's a lot of things that I, like, could probably do, but have no idea why I'm doing it. So that, that's very fair, yeah. Also on brand. Yeah, also on brand. <laughs> So, yeah, let's do the reveal. It's also a band I discovered in my. Oh, that's movie. yeah. Which uh, I was like, oh yeah, all right. <laughs> I'm wondering, like Primus, I'm wondering, right? I was trying to think like what 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 type of like music. Primus? I was trying to think of what type of music a band named Anathema would make. My first thought was like Norwegian death metal, but I don't think, I don't think that they'd be called. Well, maybe I don't know. Maybe. Well, the weird thing is, is that when I was, I was like bringing up my tabs and stuff, and then I noticed all this like stuff in the news that I guess they just announced that they were taking a hiatus like yesterday. <laughs> this is oh, like very, very, very tiny. topical. Very yeah. topical. <laughs> this is a strange episode. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, wow. Okay. I was like, all right. I've never, I feel like now I feel almost like, should I listen to them? I and then be bummed should. out that they're taking a hiatus. Yeah, yeah, there you go. No, don't be bummed about that. Like, there's probably a catalog of music. And if it's really, like, only one album, then... <laughs> then it doesn't I mean, matter if they're taking a hiatus. how much of a hiatus. hiatus. Yeah, right. <laughs> but if it's, like, 50 albums, also doesn't matter because you got some catching up to do. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. So I guess, I guess the problem is if it's, like, two or three albums, then, then yeah. it's... Then, then it's time to be bummed. Yeah, I guess. What if it's they could get back though? together in the after? Like, eh, yeah, but they it. won't. Yeah, but they won't. I'm sorry. I have very bad memories of like a band like breaking up and like being like, oh, but maybe they'll get back together and they never do. Because like I had tickets to see Pretty Girls Make Graves, and the night of the freaking concert, they broke up. Oh no! We were at what? the show. We were at the show. We were there, and they didn't come out. And they were, and then they, then they said they weren't coming out, and, the, and that they canceled the show, like the night of the show. And then we found out the next day that they broke up. Whoa! Yeah, it was so horrible. That's the so worst horrible. experience. <laughs> Never gone to a concert again. <laughs> <laughs> well, you that may be true, but for completely different reasons, yeah. actually. <laughs> yeah, it's that. That is accurate. That was a long time ago. Given. But they, they, that was a disappointment because they only had like three albums. That, that's the thing. That's the cutoff. There we go. We have a, I, this isn't part of the theme of the show, but we have now determined what the cutoff is for a band to, to break up and then, and then you get disappointed by the breakup is it has to be no more than three albums. And then, then it's disappointment. Well, I would like to announce that they have at least 10 albums. There you go. So it's oh, okay. Oh, that's a relief. It's okay. That's it's fine. fine. <laughs> well... Um, and they are a Liverpool-based rock band. Okay, Liverpool. All right, yeah. but their uh, early not Norwegian stuff, death metal. Their early Maybe stuff apparently is more more death rock. Okay, okay. <laughs> I'm glad that that's the reveal that we're doing right now instead of the actual word. Oh, sorry. Their early stuff was death doom. 
Death Doom. Okay, yeah. cool. I don't know if that switches things for anybody. <laughs> no. I mean, maybe, sort of. <laughs> Those are words that I know that could be put in a genre nader, which we have if you go to binaryjazz.us uh, slash yeah. genre nader. You'll learn about all the genres that our, that our genre generator can create. And in fact, while we're here, uh, yeah. our genre nader has generated or possibly genre nated 2,278,198 unique, probably, genres. Uh, I mean, even if it's not unique, it's still a lot. There's something unique about generating that many of them. <laughs> yes. And, you know, the best part is, we have no idea why. <laughs> That's what... Are people using the Slack bot? Are people, uh, are people using the thing on uh, the, the website? Are people using the API? Uh, we have no idea. Uh, there's a Twitter bot that, that tweets genres a couple times a day. Does it still tweet? Yeah. Oh, so. I'm dumb. I'm like, I haven't seen it in a while. Well, because I haven't been on Twitter. <laughs> that... That would probably do it. I haven't yeah. seen it in a while, but but Twitter changes their algorithm so much that I don't. That's true. I haven't seen it in a while either. I wonder if it is still going. Uh, let's see. July thirteenth was the last time that it tweeted. Actually, mm. yeah. Aww. So it hasn't. Can been. you reboot Twitter? Yeah, I'll just I'll get on that. Thank you. I did Maybe read. I did read at that. some point that they changed their. Um, they were changing their, like, API stuff, or so probably they changed something and it broke our, broke our bot. Uh, but you can still, I mean, in in the meantime. Um, <laughs> Hold on. How does that bot work? I it mean, hits, how it hits knows? the API. <laughs> yeah, but but like that's I guess that's what I'm wondering is like where does the bot live? Where does the bot exist? Like, is it? <laughs> yeah. It's not running on our server, right? No, Allison set up the bot, right? I don't remember. Allison's like, I don't <laughs> think so. It, it just became, it just- Look, it just I, just create, I just create things and I send them off into the world. And put them off the internet. And, and I hope they become autonomous beings. Um, <laughs> Maybe I this one I, did. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was being hosted on Glitch, so it might just need to be rebooted yeah. on there. Okay. Um, if memory serves, but I can look into it. I was it. trying to figure out, like, is oh, there a place- is isn't there a, a repo then for that? Isn't there a place where you can see how many tweets? Like I don't. There used to be a, a, a you know, a a, a stat on a profile. <laughs> wait, oh wait wait wait. There it is. We, there it is. There it is. Can we? 1, I'm 000, sorry. Before we get too sidetracked, can we answer 1, the question? One thousand eight hundred thirty-two tweets. Anathema. Is that right? <laughs> Please, for my sake. No. Um. So. <laughs> There's a few different no. things, but the general vibe is that it's something intensely disliked or loathed. So it's usually used as like, um, like a denouncement of something. So I'm trying to think of another example, something different. Um, something other than Ruth Bader's. Ruth yeah, Bader's I know. That's, that's like all I can think about now. <laughs> Um, wait, they must have an, a thing. This notion was anathema to most of his countrymen. So it's like something that's just like not, it's not okay, basically. Yeah, but I guess also, like the context I've always seen it in is it's like, it's like, it's like that. Like it's an, it's like something that somebody holds, uh, like an ideal that somebody holds true that like this thing is like an anathema to that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, and um. Wow. Reli religiously it's used as like a ban or a curse or like something being denounced as a curse so some like basically the opposite of a blessing um it's often used in tandem with like excommunication or the person who's been excommunicated um but it's not you know people aren't that's not happening <laughs> much that's in that that's i mean you, okay so so Y'all realize that everything that happens in my real life, I think about in D and D terms, right? Of so, course. <laughs> so, like, I think uh, you think of us just as characters, and I think you have like our stats somewhere. Um, not <laughs> not as such, but I could, but I like, I definitely like can see people in in like classes and and things. Yeah, um, it's, it's how I see the world now. Um. So like I, I like the religious aspect is is interesting 
um, because obviously there are like uh, blessing spells in in D and D. So like now I'm, I'm thinking like, what would an anathema spell do? Because <laughs> it would be if it's the opposite of a blessing, then it would be a curse. It would be like. But there's already a curse, so there'd have to be something unique about anathema to cast the anathema spell. Like, well, I'll post. I'd have to workshop in, that. I'll post in Slack the whole. The Merriam-Webster has a whole history, and it's interesting because the Greek root is like really just comes down to like a devoted thing or an offering, and it's usually for it's both like for revered objects and objects that are like curses and then somehow it just like veered into oh. more of the negative yeah okay. that's that's fascinating yeah. anyway are you all um are you all just tired this week yes there's something centering about talking to y'all and i'm realizing like i like oh i know why i haven't been feeling my best because i'm tired like but not like physically just like emotionally tired not but also, that you're causing it, it, but now I can observe it. Mm-hmm. Like psychologically, it when something happens, like a major shift in your life, there's often like a six month fall, and like we're reach- we're like at the six month fall mm-hmm. of like whether we are accepting a new norm, pushing forward, and I think we're at that point where we're like really butting our heads against that that time. I spent an hour on a call this morning uh, while I was walking um, with some folks and. Like they were sharing what school is like near them and how schools are dealing, or in many cases, like dropping the ball on dealing with uh, learning right now. Um, and then, like, you know, okay, well, there's talk about vaccine, but it's not going to be, there's not going to be a pediatric version for, you know, perhaps fall of 2021, maybe well beyond that. And then everybody in the call was just silent for a minute, like digesting like what that means. Like, yeah, I was also doing a lot of walking and so listening to a lot of podcasts, very borderline weird ones, you know, like this. And um, uh, I listened to an episode particularly interesting where someone was saying they intro their their podcast. Uh, we are on uh, we're halfway through week three of uh, social distancing. And I was like, wow, what a, what a different take on the world it is just that where I was three weeks in versus now, mm. you know? Uh, and I mean, cause masks weren't really pushed back then at that point, you know, there was still yeah, some conversation was, on the effectiveness right. and, but they were talking about like what that's like, you know, three weeks in and how that's changed. Like they're normal. They're at that point, they're normal. And I'm going like, wow, like, holy cow. Um, there's some serious perspective coming for people, you know? So, like, so, so we on school, uh, ish. And one of the things that we, the kids are doing, still doing, we're doing last year where they'd have this earth education class where they go out in nature and like learn how to do like survival skills and like tracking and all sorts of stuff and it's really cool so they're doing it again this year with um a group of basically just a bunch of their friends and a few other families um this is so last year wasn't a, d- a thing right like we did stuff and it was awesome and then there was uh then 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 covid hit and then we stopped meeting in person and we they he started trying to do stuff online and it didn't really work very well um and and but we plan to do it again this year. This is the only thing that they're doing like in person, but they are doing it in person. Um, but over the summer, one of the, the friend, the, the moms, uh, single mom-ish, I guess, sort of like has this weird dysfunctional relationship uh, where she's back again and not uh, with her husband, uh, th- that they're not actually separated, but they kind of are. Anyway, uh, her kids, her two boys, are my son's, like, best friends. So, like, this is a connection that we want to not lose. But over the summer, she started kind of going off the deep end, saying, like, masks are pointless and the COVID is fake and all this other shit, right? Um, And so we've had, like, not a ton of opportunities over the summer, 
but a couple where we had to sort of make a choice. Do we do this thing, go to this event mm -hmm. that she's hosting, knowing that no one is going to be there with masks mm -hmm. um, for the sake of our kids' mental health? Or do we uh, not? And then she potentially sees us as like threatening because she gets super offended when people like don't give her positive feedback, essentially. Mm -hmm. Um, so we went and like they had a, like a, a summer birthday thing and then we went and it was outside and, and like, you know, whatever at the lake and it was okay. Uh, and there's, I think, one other thing that happened. And so now we're doing this thing every other week. Um, and my partner, Aaron, spent like a lot of last week hand wringing over whether to go or not go wear masks or don't wear masks like understanding that if we wore masks we'd probably be the only ones doing it uh that makes it you know far less effective but at least we're doing a thing and if we don't do a thing then we're like just like giving the peer pressure of everybody not doing the thing um nobody yeah. else is like willing to really like say anything to her um about things so like like this is sort of us like planting our feet in the ground, which is sort of one of the things that I, I said. Um, so finally, she said like the night before that she like posted to them that she was going to do it. And I was like, okay. And she's like, oh yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Um, but she, she said it in a way that was like, well, we're concerned about like, you know, my, my parents uh, and their health and whatever. Um, mm. And then she, 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 she's like, well, what's up with your dad? I'm like, well, he had freaking cancer and he has rheumatoid arthritis and hasn't compromised immune system. So that doesn't go away. It doesn't matter what's up, what's up with my dad. This is, but like, anyway. Um, so like we're having this like thing and this is like a regular thing that we're going to be going to or they're going to be going to and so like we're regularly interacting with this like I don't know it's outside it's not inside so that's a, you know makes things better but like at the same time like like it's like I don't know it's it's and like one of the things that we sort of learned at this thing was that um, besides the fact that like some of their friends were doing stuff over the summer is that like um, my daughter's best friend who is in that group was hanging out with these other girls all summer or over the summer and like the fact that we weren't the fact that we were like you know quarantining and keeping social distance whatever means that they were not doing those things with their friends missing opportunities and like this is I don't know like I have no idea what the long-term effects of that are going to be you know what I mean like like this is definitely going to be a thing that is like a, a huge part of like their picture of of being t early teenagers like this is gonna be a huge thing when they are adults like you know do you remember that that year where we couldn't do things or like you know like I don't know like I don't know where it goes from here but like there's a there's definitely a thing it's gonna be like a, a fundamental part of childhood the same way that like like I think of of um you know awakening to uh to i don't know um for like my awakening to like the united states like influence in other parts of the world was partially through like desert storm you know like i remember that i remember going and i remember like it not making sense at the time it still doesn't make sense like you know like, other than like money and oil and like whatever um and like that's a thing that that like kind of set me on a path right like it set me on a path of like where i stand uh politically ideologically whatever um and like i think this is like one of those things um because it's because there's nothing like it's it's such a long standing thing um i i don't know where it goes from here but there's so many things that are happening that are all part that are all tied up in this there's a whole like the 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 conflict between groups of people the 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 that that we've we've devolved into this like like us versus them sort of herd mentality um that's being just like sort of cheered on by the the commander in chief you know like it's it's yeah it's definitely it's definitely a thing it's def we're definitely in the middle of a thing and i would like the thing to be fucking over yeah um i think like like to that point like remember that time like when you were younger and like you just got in a bad headspace and like you know 
angry or whatever. And then like, after you kind of got out of it, like out your head straight, you had to like apologize. People like, Hey, sorry, I was in a bad spot. Right. Like the shitty thing is like that we're all sort of going to have to do that at the end. Right. Like, mm -hmm. like there's going to be that, that, that reckoning that comes at some point. Uh, and I don't know what, like how soon that is, but there's going to be that reckoning that like, we're all sort of like, Oh yeah, I didn't really do that thing. Like, you know, that, would have been the best I think I could do because I was dealing with some shit, but like everyone was, mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I, I, I posted a little bit about it, but I don't think a lot about this in the context of grief, you know, like mm -hmm. Allison said something about grief. Uh, when I was, I was, uh, sort of lamenting my move a few months back. And so mm -hmm. grief has been one of those concepts I've been bumping into a lot on my walks and, uh, <clears throat> and like the, the, the saccharine, like, oh, the five stages of grief. and But there's something to that, like, where we're all sort of navigating that, and we're all in different spots on that. And that's that inherently creates a lot of friction in a in an area where there was already a lot of friction. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's a very yeah, real... And I know, like, and I know even for this, this person who has these, like, ideas about mask wearing and, and the virus and whatever, like, one of the places where she's coming from is the fact that her kids like her two boys are super, have been super depressed all summer. And that's real. And that's a thing that she lives with. And like she said, like at that birthday party, she hasn't seen her younger son, who's like, who's my son's age, so 15-ish. Uh, no, he's, on, he's younger, he's, he's, he might be 13. Uh, but she hasn't seen him smile. She hadn't seen him smile until that day. Like that's shitty. And like, like it, uh, it makes sense, like why she's pissed off at the world and, you know about this thing because she sees this like like her kids like like wilting like you know like plants that don't get enough sun you know because they just don't they're not around people and like and they need people and like you know our our kids have been doing uh i guess somewhat better um but like they're bummed about it too but they also are like realistic about like the situation um my son like asks about like what the news is about like what covid cases are every day um like when he get the paper and he goes upstairs and talks to Aaron. He's like, you know, so what's, what's new today? Um, you know? Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's hard. It's shitty for everyone. That's the thing is it's shitty for everyone. Yeah. It's, 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 we all just need to, it's, we all deal with it in different ways. I think it's, I think the other corollary I'd make is like someone dies in a family, you know, and like all these family members show up that have inherent friction for whatever reason. And now you're in like a very emotionally loaded time. And having to, you know, having to unpack things and communicate and, you know, plan and deal with the fallout, but there's baggage that exists that hasn't been unpacked, and uh, that just creates for some some explosive communication. You know, is uh, that why there's always fights at funerals? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah. And I and I, I certainly am not trying to position this as like a uh, both sides thing because like absolutely, it's 100% clear that yeah, the Republican side of the U.S. Have, have lost their fucking minds, uh, and I want to make sure I'm on record saying that, and not <laughs> and not both sides in this. So, uh, if there was any ambiguity, <laughs> so when they check the transcripts, let it be known. <laughs> let it be known. Let it be known. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They lost their fucking minds. I pity the poor court reporter that has to go through our transcripts to find the. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, well, Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes or Google Play. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at, at binaryjazz. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the forum on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz. Thank you.